we're going to be looking at how we can make video act responsively when the page is resized if the video is not treated in a responsive way then it won't respond and function the way that the rest of the items do on the page. So this right here is my final build out of this particular page and you can see as I resize the page the video grows and shrinks and obviously it's repositioned based on the size of the page. The start page that we're going to be working with looks like this. So this page is a page that we worked on in an earlier lesson and it does work responsively but if I scroll down you can see that my video does not work responsively and at a certain point I will get horizontal scroll bars that I'll have to use in order to be able to view the video so this is not the optimum setup we don't want our video to be handled in this way so we'll be learning at techniques that we can use to make the video function in a responsive way the page that we're going to be working on is a page that we used in an earlier exercise but I'll just review it with you quickly it has some basic HTML code. We have our meta tag that sets the viewport to the initial scale of 1. We have our HTML5 shiv so that we can use HTML5 elements. We have our respond.js script to support the older versions of IE in conjunction with media queries. And then we have some inline styles. And I'm not going to go through all these since these are something that we discussed in an earlier video. I do have a comment here where I'll be entering the video code that we'll be creating in this particular lesson. And then if we scroll down into the HTML, you can see that there's a section tag that wraps around everything. There's a header that has the header image as well as an H1 tag. There's an aside that contains some interesting facts about whale sharks. And then there's the article which contains the text based content and an iframe that I got directly from YouTube. So let me just review how we can get this code that I have right here from YouTube. I found a video that I wanted to incorporate into my project. It's right here. And on the video page, if I look, there is a link that I can click for share. And if I click this, it'll give me some HTML code that I can use to share. Well, I'm going to click embed and when I click embed it's going to give me this code right here and if you want to specify the video size you can plug that in here so I believe for my example I just chose 853 by 480 these are all predetermined sizes based on the size of the original video and it lets you just specify how big you want it to be so it could really be anything you can also put a custom size in there as well. And then I'm just going to uncheck show suggested videos when the video finishes. And I will copy this code right here. And if I go back into my HTML document, I can just paste this code right in. If I'm displaying this locally, I need the HTTP colon, which YouTube doesn't give you. So you may have to add that if you want to be able to view this on your own local machine. If we save the page and view it in the browser, here's what the page looks like. And you can see here's my video. If I click the play button, it will indeed start to play the actual video on my web page even though it's pulling it from YouTube so everything is working the only thing that's not working is let me just mute the sound is when I resize my window the video does not resize so I would have to scroll to watch the video so let's resolve this issue by adjusting some of our CSS so as we talked about some HTML elements don't play nicely with responsive layouts and this happens to be the case with the iframe tag which is what we're using since we got this information directly from YouTube this would also be true if you were using another service to display your video like Vimeo or something like that what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a div around the iframe content right here and then we can use that as a hook. Now the iframe code that I got from YouTube does include width and height attributes. If we remove these 
which are forcing it to display at that particular size. When I refresh my page, you can see how my video comes in teeny, teeny, tiny. This is probably not what I want to do because essentially this video has no dimensions. So I this is something that I can't fix within the style sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those back in. I need to have the width and height values there. And what we're going to need to do is we need to ensure that when our web page is resized, then we don't want the content to break out of our layout. So with some CSS and a little bit of HTML, we have a way around that. The first thing that we need to do is we need to add a div, as I mentioned, around the iframe. So I'm just going to add a div and I will assign a class of video to my div tag just so I have a hook for it. And then the closing div tag is going to go after the closing iframe tag. So now my iframe is nested inside the div with a class of video. Then what we're going to do is we're going to style the containing div by hooking that class right there. And let's go up into our CSS and let's add the style that we need to do. So I'm going to write a rule for dot video. And inside the video, we're going to give it a position of relative. And by itself, that doesn't do anything. We're just switching on the positioning so that we can absolutely position something that's within it, which will be applying to our iframe. I'm going to add padding to the bottom of my video. And the padding value I'm going to add is 56.25%. I'm going to add padding on the top as well. And I'm going to use a padding on the top of 25 pixels. And I'm going to add a height of 0 and an overflow of hidden. So let's just talk about what some of these things mean. We already mentioned what the position is. This is just going to allow us to absolutely position a child of this div. The padding on the bottom, that value, that 56.25% is calculated out of the aspect ratio of the original video. So in my case, the aspect ratio was 16.9, which means that I'm going to be using a height of 56.25%. If I was displaying a video that had an aspect ratio of 4 by 3, then we'd set the padding on the bottom to 75%. But because we're using 16 by 9, we'll use the 56.25. And if we divide 9 into 16, we get 0.5625. So that's where that value is actually coming from. The padding on the top is set to 25 pixels and this just allows space for the Chrome or the kind of wrapper that's specific to YouTube so it allows that little header section to display right there. Then I needed to set my height to zero and that's because the padding on the bottom gives the element the height it needs. We don't need to set the width because it's going to automatically resize with the responsive element that contains this particular div and in this case our video div is inside of our article which is already acting responsively and then setting the overflow to hidden just ensures that any content that would protrude outside of this element is going to be hidden from view. The next thing that we need to do is we need to style the iframe itself so we'll make a specific rule for dot video space iframe so that we can target that and we are going to set the position to absolute We'll set the top value to 0 and the left value to 0. And I'm going to set my width to 100% and the height also to 100%. So the absolute positioning is being used because the containing element has a height of 0. If the iframe was positioned normally, we would have given it a height of 0 as well. The top and the left values are set to zero so that the iframe correctly positions inside the containing element. And the width and the height properties ensure that the video takes up 100% of the space that's used by the containing element, which remember that's actually set with padding. So if we save this now and if we refresh in our browser, you can see that now my video is resizing 
with the page. So now it's actually working in a responsive manner and it sizes up and down. It's going to add these little black block copies when the aspect ratio gets altered right there. So now it is acting responsively. Now I still have a little bit of problems with just how this is displaying so I'm just going to add a little bit more CSS to my page to adjust this I am going to go down to the rule that we already have for the large screen on article and I'm going to tell when the page is large for my article to float left and I'm going to assign a width value of 60 percent and if we save the page now and refresh it you can see that now my page functions a little bit better. I don't have those weird black spaces. This stays proportionate and that's because before the article wasn't being floated but now that it's being floated now this works in the manner that we want. Now at the mobile size or the small size screen my article is not floated so the video just flows underneath the paragraph which is where it displays in the HTML and it still displays here but because now the article is floated this aside and then the main content are going to appear side by side so this is a great little technique for you to incorporate video into your projects and have it work responsively